let's go back to high school. How was your art experience uh, in uh, high school? It was good. I was at um, a school called Southwest in Minneapolis, which is a public school. It's always kind of charting in the top 50, 100 public schools in the country. So it's like a very good public school to the point where it's almost bordering like a private school education. Um, part of that, I think, is um, is funding. A lot of it is privilege, right? Um, it's a very, very white school. Um, and I was kind of a token, right? Like I was one of the few black kids. I remember having this very clear moment, which I'm writing about actively in some of my work. But in, I think, third grade, I, which was the first full year of school in the United States, it was a very diverse school. The school I went to, um, obviously elementary school, was called Fulton Academy. Um, and they changed the busing districts over the summer. I had no idea what that meant. You know, I was I was a new American. I didn't really even understand the concept of race yet, because um, it's not to say that there isn't racism or race in uh, Sweden. Of course, there is, but it's a different type of dynamics, a different type of discourse, especially that early on. Um, and fourth grade, I realized what changing the busing busing districts meant, because it meant all of the black and brown people were suddenly gone. And so I remember walking in feeling like, oh, I was part of this very diverse cluster of people that I loved. And now I'm walking in and I'm the only person or one of two people that look like me in the entire hallway, in the entire floor, right? Um, and so just feeling that shift in my reality, I carried that all the way through high school. Um, and so I, I think there was a lot of kind of cognitive dissonance. I always um, tried to kind of, um, I think I was trying to figure out who I was, but also kind of uh, ignoring who I was in some capacities because it meant dealing with a lot of, you know, kind of bitter realities about race and privilege and things of that nature. Um, but I think, you know, artistically, I felt that in a similar way in the sense that high school, it was an IB program, International Baccalaureate. It was a lot of uh, AP studies, um, advanced placement, I think it is, I don't remember. But so it was a lot of like really um, high level education, which was great for me. Um, in terms of preparing me for college and stuff, but it was very technical in many cases. Uh, in at times it was a bit critical, you know, um, critical thinking and things of that nature, but a lot of it was very technical. So it was very left-brained. And so there were times where I really struggled, right? I mean, as an immigrant, I didn't speak English fluently until fourth grade. So things like standardized testing because of my right brain thinking, because I, you know, process language differently than a lot of other people. Um, like noun and verb placement are opposite in Swedish. And so the way that I naturally think about a phrase in a sentence might be different than a lot of my friends. Those things made things like standardized testing for me difficult to the point where, you know, I kind of thought I was dumb for a lot of school, um, you know, because I just, I couldn't, despite my best efforts, I couldn't do things as well. I, I hit a wall in English. I hit a wall in math. I hit a wall in all these things that I just, I couldn't get past. I think some of that was dealing with the, the trials of home. But the moment that really did it for me, and I think changed my entire trajectory as a career, especially with my passion for architecture, was I remember I was in a history class. I think it was IB, AP, HL, so higher level two uh, history. So it was like the highest level I could be in in history. And we were learning history and it was great. You know, it was fine. I love my professors as a dual or teacher. This was a dual teacher class. Um, and then one day they brought in a uh, a art history professor or art history teacher. And he was actually one of my art teachers from earlier on in my high school path. And he came in and he did the entire curriculum that we had done the last, I don't know, four or five weeks in one seminar and did it through an art historical lens. And I remember suddenly all of these things that I've been learning for four or five weeks just started clicking. And I just understood it in a different way. And it was one of those moments where I was like, oh, you can blend these things. You can bl blend the, ref the left brain and the right brain. I can take a historical or uh, an artistic approach to history or to math or to English or to whatever these studies might be. And so I think that was one of the defining moments for me, so much, uh, so much to the point where I ended up being an art history major in college just a few months later at DePaul University in Chicago. And so... Um, that had a big impact on me. And I think I did do his, uh, you know, art classes and stuff like that in, in high school as well. But a lot of that was earlier on. And so I do think that part of me was stifled a bit until mm -hmm. that kind of moment of clarity clicked, you know, in my last few months at school. So uh, I was grateful for that for sure.